Now, the first thing I want to do is cover different forms of loss. And I may have alluded to this already uh, in previous demonstrations or previous sub-lessons, but I want to nail it down here. And by the way, you may want to go back after you watch this and watch the demonstration in sub-lesson 3.2 where I looked at my spreadsheet using the factor analysis of information risk, uh, that spreadsheet on the insider threat that used PERT and Monte Carlo simulations, I talked about separating primary loss from secondary loss. So primary loss is basically primary stakeholder loss, something that happens to the organization, to the company, to the enterprise, and affecting the company stakeholders, a direct result of an event or an incident. So. The three main forms are productivity. This could be producing your product or delivering your service, whatever your value proposition is. Then the replacement, replacement of data, replacement of facilities, equipment, and the cost of response. So lost revenue from a operational downtime or outage, paying workers when they can't do anything uh, due to an outage or a breach or ransomware, uh, replacing tangible assets, securities, cash, having to go purchase Bitcoin to pay off a ransom, the people hours spent restoring operations following an incident, the time spent having meetings, incident response, disaster recovery. Secondary loss, which as we know can be much more expensive, come in four types, response, competitive advantage, CA, fines and judgments, and reputation. So secondary loss is the most difficult to quantify, it's also more time consuming and the losses can be exponential, okay? Typically with a primary loss, we can get a pretty good handle on the kind of one-time costs, but secondary costs can have a life of their own. They can actually be cascading costs. For example, from fines and judgments, legal defense costs, public relations, regulatory sanctions, there's obviously the possibility of having to notify customers when the credit cards are stolen, uh, paying for credit monitoring services, covering loss to a secondary stakeholder. You may end up losing market share. It could lower your stock price. It could be more expensive to borrow money, higher cost of capital. So these are all secondary forms of loss. And those are important to understand because they really are at the heart of our business continuity planning. Now, business continuity planning, BCP, can be a plan. It can also be a program. It could be a project, okay? It involves preparing all the activities and procedures that you deploy to avert the loss of a critical business function and service for a predetermined, unacceptable amount of time. So really here, what we're trying to prevent is primary loss, okay? So that we don't have to worry about secondary loss. Now, BCP, is made up of three elements or an input to three elements. First, the BIA, business impact analysis. Basically, analyzing the sensitivity and mission criticality of your assets, both tangible and intangible. Uh, discovery of the impact of losing the support of a resource. For example, your email system, you know, Microsoft Exchange, your credit card processing, uh, your voice over IP being down having a DDoS attack in your data center. It's gonna determine time loss, okay? Time loss of a resource, the loss flow, so the escalation of loss over time. And it specifically addresses the six forms of loss, primary and secondary. Next, we have backup planning and backup policies. And that's kind of speaks for itself, uh, whatever kind of grandfathering scheme you're using or whatever you're backing up to tape or disk or whatever solution you have, backup policies are part of the BCP or it's an output of the BCP. And again, just using ransomware as an example, one of the best ways to countermeasure ransomware is to have perfect backups, which means tested backup and restore. The third output or the third component that kind of drives from BCP is the DRP, the Disaster Recovery Plan, which has a narrower focus as being part of the BCP. So how do you recover individual systems and services if there's a failure or an outage? Officially, it's a collection of plans and it represents the human resources, the technical, the physical, the processes that you have to use to recover an activity 
or a business function that's been affected by an interruption or an emergency or hopefully not a catastrophe or a crisis. So the goal is to assist the company, to assist the business continuity planners in knowing how to get critical systems back to full operational functionality in acceptable time frames. And we'll talk about some of those metrics and those key performance indicators here in a moment. Here's the steps of the business continuity process. First, you do the business impact analysis and your assessment. Then you develop recovery strategies. Next, you formulate recovery plans. It could be projectized, okay, with a start and a finish, okay, a project. Then you're gonna test the plans. And there's lots of ways to do testing. You could do a checklist review, which is a preliminary step to a real test. Then you could do a structured walkthrough where your incident response team, uh, your continuity team, physically implements the plans that you have on paper, and then you review each step, step by step, to assess the effectiveness. There's a simulation test where you have a team that does role playing and scenarios, disaster scenarios. You see this done all over the country with FEMA on a regular basis. Uh, there's parallel tests where maybe you have a recovery site, like a warm site or a mobile site that's brought up to a state of operational readiness. And then if you can afford it and you can afford the disruption and the rigorous aspects of it, the full interruption test. And then of course you want to train and maintain and always with the goal of continual improvement. Let's talk more about the business impact analysis, which is going to involve several different types of metrics that you'll need to know about on the exam. The BIA is going to determine the MTD, which is the maximum tolerable downtime, or MAO, it's also referred to the maximum acceptable outage. And this is going to be based on individual systems, applications, and services. So this will be an elaborate spreadsheet similar to some of the tools we've seen earlier, where you're going to have this on a scenario by scenario or event by event basis. And if an outage lasts longer than the MTD, it will definitely negatively affect your business operations and continuity of operations. So for example, think about all the components that go into a corporate web server, the physical and virtual Apache servers, OpenSSL, maybe you have no SQL backend databases, uh, cost for service providers, ISPs and CSPs. You've got network infrastructure. You've got the skilled labor costs of maintenance. So maybe your website generates an average of $10,000 an hour during peak times. So 60 minutes of downtime is going to cost you $10,000 of direct revenue, equaling an MTD or MAO of 60 minutes. These terms are also referred to as maximum tolerable outage MTO, okay? Now, from the MTD, you can determine RTO, which is the recovery time objective. That's the amount of time allowed for the recovery of a business process or a resource back to its previous state when there's a disaster. If you surpass this objective, that's unacceptable, okay? Unacceptable loss could be experienced or maybe even the entire survival of your organization. And it's up to management to determine the RTO using risk analysis and risk assessment. The RPO is the recovery point objective. This is the point before an outage to which data should be restored. In other words, it's the last known state of accurate and complete data. RPO and RTO are really closely aligned to contribute to effective incident handling and response. Finally, we define MTBF, which is the mean time between failures. This is a historical representation or a statistical approximation of how long a component, let's say a RAID array or your intranet web servers or your diesel generator should last before it fails, typically in hourly terms. MTTR is the mean time to repair. Okay, this is the average time it takes to perform a repair after a failure happens. In other words, the time you spend during the intervention in a given process. From ready.gov, we can see this nice table showing four main phases. First, your impact analysis, where you maybe use the Delphi method, developing questionnaires, conducting workshops, receiving completed answers from your team, from your stakeholders, reviewing the questionnaires, then doing follow-up interviews, looking for any gaps. That leads to the recovery strategies 
identifying and documenting resources based on the BIA, conducting gap analysis, exploring recovery strategy options, selecting your strategies with the approval of management, and then implementing the strategies. From a strategy, we get our plans, our projects, our programs, our plan framework, organizing our recovery teams, developing relocation plans, cold site, warm site, hot site, mobile site. We write our business continuity and IT disaster recovery procedures. We have documented manual workarounds. We assemble, we validate, and we get sign off from management. And then finally, of course, is the testing and the exercises. And I've already mentioned several of those, checklist review, structured walkthrough. Once you document your results, you're gonna update the business continuity plan to incorporate lessons learned from testing and exercises leading to continual improvement. This is ready.gov. We just saw a ready.gov four-phased business continuity plan, but this is the business continuity planning suite. And I really want to recommend to you that you go and get the business continuity archive. It's 13 megabytes and it was developed by the DHS and FEMA, right? So it's software that helps you create, improve, and update your BCP. So it shows you how to ex download and extract that. Here's the tools, okay? It's got a BCP and a DRP generator, excellent. It's also got a self-directed exercise for testing your BCP. There's also some BCP training on the site in the FEMA multimedia library, or at least you can get the transcript, okay? So some video training up here as well. I really highly recommend that you make sure that you take the time to do some homework on your own and get this software package download and watch these short videos. There's also companies out there that make business continuity software. And so you can see that some of these Unitrends, Enterprise Backup, this is from 2017, Elephant Drive. A lot of these are backup and restore features, okay? And you know, that's a whole lot of what, you know, disaster recovery is, but you've also got Shield, Storage Pipe, Fastback DR, Cloud Endure, and then here's Office 365 Backup by Cloud Ally. So anyway, a bunch of resources, a bunch of concepts and terminology to realize for the exam and for the real world. These are the kind of tools that we're using here at Brio to make sure that we can continue our business operations even if a catastrophe happens.